Perfect, please. So the second topic is, uh, it's about scaling uh, too, but this time it's more scaling of hematite and alunite. As I said, during the introduction, we have a process of HPAL where we, we feed the ore, the, uh, the slurry of ore in the, in the HPAL, in the autoclave. We add the sulfuric acid to do the, the leaching. And during this process, we have a, a precipitation of, uh, of hematite, the iron precipitate as hematite and uh, the alumina precipitate as alunite in the autoclave. So um, the most important part of this precipitation stay in, uh, in the solution as a slurry and leave the autoclave at the end of the, the process, the, the Ashpal process. But part of this, uh, of this precipitation is done on the walls and on all the parts of the autoclave. So you can see on the picture there that you have a precipitation on an agitator. You have precipitation on the walls that you can see on the second picture on the bottom. So the issue is that is that it's, I think, uh, enough, clear enough, but uh, when you have precipitation on the shaft and the, on the agitator, you decrease your efficiency of agitation. And uh, when you precipitate on the, on the walls, you decrease the residence time in the autoclave and you can create some, uh, some plug of your, of your autoclave. As we have six compartments in the autoclave and we go from one to another one, uh, by overflowing. So if you increase, if you have too much scales, you can have some issue of plugging. So this kind of crust of scales can be very thick, especially in the first compartment where we had uh, the sulfuric acid. So we create uh, thick uh, scales that can go to 15 centimeters in the worst case in the first compartment. So that's begin to be a huge scales and it reduces a lot the resistance tie and the, uh, the agitator uh, efficiency. Uh, we try to understand better the, what happened really uh, about these scales because in the design of the plant, it was not uh, forecast to be that important. And uh, finally, we have a different ore uh, compared to what we, sh we, we were, we should have uh, if we compare to the, the design. So that explains a lot why we have this, uh, this scale. So now we have to find the solution uh, to reduce this uh, scaling rate, which is very important, or to, uh, to be able finally to measure the, the thickness of the, of the scales. Because we have to stop the autoclave after a certain number of days of operation without knowing uh, what is the thickness of the scale. But uh, with experience, we know that after 120, 140 days of operation, we decrease a lot the efficiency in the autoclave because of the scales. So usually we stop uh, one autoclave after this time just to do the maintenance and remove all the scales. But sometimes we had the surprise to see that finally the thickness of the scale were not that high, was not that thick. And uh, finally, we would be able, we would have been able to run a uh, longer time the autoclave. That's why we, if we have a, a method just to measure the thickness of the crust of the scales in the autoclave, it could be a first, uh, first solution because we will be able to know when we really have to stop an autoclave for maintenance and maybe gain some, uh, some days of production, which is very uh, interesting. The other uh, part is if we have a solution to uh, finally uh, reduce the scaling rate or maybe uh, spread the scaling in the, in the autoclave, in the other compartment, that would be very interesting. Can we go to the next slide, please? So here you have uh, some examples of the, the crust that we have in the autoclave. Uh, that's hematite and alunite, as I said. So it's a really hard crust, a very hard uh, scales that we have. We need to remove it by uh, water pressure, higher high pressure, and uh, and it's very hard to to remove. But uh, finally, if we can just reduce the the thickness of this uh, of these scales 
or just again being able to measure it during the operation that will be a, a very good uh, option a very good solution due to the extreme condition in the autoclave we didn't find this uh, this way to measure the the, the thickness uh, yet but uh, that's why we are here and uh, hoping that you will have a, a solution for that so of course uh, we don't want to decrease the hpl uh, the hpl performance and uh, and recovery so we we can't uh, reduce, for example, the acid injection, reduce the acid injection or acid dosage, finally, just to be sure uh, that we don't precipitate uh, the hematite or thing like this. So we need to keep the same performance in the autoclave. We can't do uh, very big change, changes like uh, changing the, the acid, the type of acid or uh, this kind of thing. We can't really change the ore. The feed uh, is uh, what it is and what we have on the mine. So finally, we can't really play on this, uh, on this part. And we have to keep the same uh, safety requirements that we already have on the, on the autoclave. For sure, we can't play on this, uh, on this, uh, this point. So I think I'm done with this presentation. I'm hoping that you will have many questions for me.